Chapter 13 in your text is entitled, God the Word. We're looking at the characteristic of the communicating God. God speaks throughout Scripture. Scripture itself is God's communication. In Genesis 1, the phrase, God said, is repeated ten times in that passage. Uh, it's five times. Uh, it, it says that... Uh, <clears throat> that God, God blessed things twice. In Revelation 22, at the other end of the Bible, uh, he says, I come three times, I am two times. So he's speaking in both ends of the Bible and everywhere in between. In fact, the Bible itself is called the Word of God. And you look at some of the verbs used with God throughout Scripture. He blesses, He curses, He counsels, He teaches, He intercedes, He advocates, He speaks. He names, He covenants, He communes. Uh, God is clearly a communicating God. In fact, the Word is one of the names of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God's Word does the work of God. His Word creates the universe, holds the universe together, casts out demons, heals, provides salvation grows believers, sustains believers, preserves believers from sin, provides spiritual guidance. In fact, God's Word has the attributes of God. God's Word is complete, unchanging, living, eternal, pure, pu true, and unbounded. God's Word is to be praised as God is praised, even above the name of God. God is clearly a communicating God. He communicates continuously, really. He holds the, the uh, universe together by the word of His power. Very likely, He's communicating with the universe to hold it together. Yet again, like the other attributes of God and God Himself, the communicating aspect of God is not detectable by us. We can't hear the communication of God unless He puts it into a form that we can hear. In His natural form, there is no way we can, in fact, detect His communication. But He wants us to understand that He's a communicating God. Therefore, He created physical illustrations of His communicating nature. And there are several different ways in which He did that. We've already looked at uh, the mathematical nature, at least briefly, we've mentioned the mathematical nature of the universe. The universe seems to have a structure which corresponds with human language. It has a structure more specifically that corresponds with a specific human language, that of mathematics. So there is an illustration in the mathematical nature of the universe of God's communicating uh, power. There's also uh, evidence uh, and, and an illustration of God's communication in the language that He created in humans, in human language. And there's also an illustration of God's communicating power in animal communication. We're going to look at that for a few moments here. Animals can, say, uh, can communicate with one another in a variety of ways. In considering a spectrum of perfection of communication among animals, we can start with animals that have very, very simple communicating powers. They can send simple single meaning messages and they can use it use they can do that using a variety of senses in the process some of them use for example the sense of smell to send information the honeybee for example uh, has uh, um, in the honeybee hive there are some bees which are out collecting honey there are some bees, the younger bees, that are nursing the young. There are other bees that are actually uh, guarding the entrance. Not very many of them, but there are several of them. That's their job. Those guard bees, in fact, uh, pass information from one guard bee to another in a variety of ways. One of them is, if one of them stings an invader, he leaves a chemical signature uh, that in fact alerts the other guard bees that <laughs> you're, they're supposed to sting here. And so uh, honeybees can uh, 
pass on information in a very simple fashion by leaving that kind of, of chemical. We've already referred to on the, the uh, butterflies and moths, the, they send out chemical messages indicating that uh, they, they want a mate. Uh, same sort of thing occurs in some snakes and some mammals. Other organisms communicate by sound. Again, these are, we're, these are examples of simple uh, one-meaning messages. So you've got crickets, frogs, and that sort of thing that send out sounds that indicate nothing more than I want a mate, or as a mate, uh, as a potential mate, I'm sitting here. The alarm calls of prairie dogs are in this category, simple little barks that indicate that uh, something is approaching. Other organisms use sight for this. Uh, for example, lightning bugs, when they send out flashes of light, there are simple messages that mean, here I am, or this is where you need to come if, in fact, you want to mate with me. You've got uh, baboons that have threat displays. They show particular portions of their body or exaggerate certain portions of their body in order to scare something away. If courtship dances, simple uh, behaviors that in fact are understood to mean something about mating. Other organisms use touch or feel. Ants will tap the ground to actually tell other ants where they need to go. Uh, tree hoppers will in fact vibrate on plants to cause other tree hoppers to know where to go to find them. Uh, then there's direct contact that some organisms use, especially in courtship and in mating, to pass on information in that fashion. Many animals use simple, single meaning messages to pass information on. Fewer animals, other animals though, can use messages that have more than one meaning. For example, um, uh, deer, white-tailed deer actually have several different indications. The female, the doe, uh, can pass on information to the young in a variety of ways. There's one message, usually an oral message, something that can be heard, it indicates that the young is supposed to be still and not move. And another message indicates that she is supposed, the young is supposed to run alongside and keep up with the doe. Another message uh, will, will indicate that uh, they're supposed to come close to her, uh, not necessarily to run, but to move close to her. So three different messages, three different sounds that have simple messages, simple meanings. Some organisms uh, uh, signal warnings of uh, uh, predators, things that they need to be afraid of. Vervet monkeys, for example, have different warnings for the troop. In the case of pythons, or eagles, or leopards threatening the troop. If you think about it, it makes sense. If you've got a bird that's threatening you, uh, that you might want to run and hide somewhere on the ground. But if you've got a snake that's threatening you, you might want to run up in a tree. That wouldn't be what you would do for a, for a bird. So they have different uh, warning signals for different kinds of predators. Other organisms even can send and receive signals from different species. For example, sea lions, porpoises, orcas, elephants, they can be trained by humans to respond to signals by humans uh, and to behave in certain ways as a consequence of that. And then there's a occasionally you run into an organism that can even invent their own simple signals. A Japanese macaque, for example, invented a particular alarm call for a rattlesnake, specifically to a rattlesnake, and tried to teach that to the other macaques in the troop. Stepping up to a bit more complicated means of communication, some animals can pass on messages, individual messages that have multiple meanings or carry more than one piece of information in the same message. Probably the classic example here is the honeybee that can pass on information about where a flower is by a process called a waggle dance. 
They come into the hive hanging on uh, vertical combs. They will uh, transect a, a circle, figure eight kind of circle. Uh, the angle of the, uh, the, the middle of the figure eight with respect to the top of the comb indicates the angle, the direction that the flower is with respect to the sun. The speed at which they make this figure eight is passing on information about the distance or technically the amount of honey that they need to fill up with to get to the flower. They're passing on more than one piece of information from the same dance. Other organisms are capable of passing on such complex messages to members of another species or receive it from members of another species. For example, a couple of bottlenose dolphins uh, are capable of responding to commands that involve up to five separate functions or actions. For example, you can tell them to place the pipe at the bottom of the pool into a hoop on the surface of the pool. So with five commands, place, bottom, pipe, surface, hoop, they know to do all of those things. A single message carrying multiple instructions. Stepping up in, an, in a sense in complexity and communication, we have organisms that can communicate identity through a means of communication. For example, there's group identity. Many whales and birds, songbirds, will have a special kind of song that indicates or is, uh, is characteristic of a particular uh, family group or uh, uh, a larger group than even a family, a population. These songs are, are, are recognizable to every member in that particular group. They know where the group is. They can, they can come back to it if, they're, uh, if they got lost from it. And they can then identify when something is from another group. There's also individual identifications. The same whales that might have a particular song that indicates uh, they're part of a particular pod or family group will also have a distinctive song of their own. So that another whale listening to the song will be able to tell, ah, they're from my pod, my family group, and this is that particular whale. They'll be able to identify the individuals in that fashion. Birds can do that same thing. Whales are really quite amazing. Their songs can be up to 10 hours long. Those songs can, in fact, convey information about what group they're in, what subgroup they're in, what family they're in, and what individual is involved. And they're very, very complex, beautiful uh, means of communication. And stepping up to perhaps the next level of complexity in communication, a few animals actually can learn or utilize sign language. Humans will teach sign language or try to teach sign language to animals. Uh, chimpanzees, orangutans, they can learn sign language from humans fairly readily. When it comes to gorillas, uh, most gorillas don't seem to be able to pick up sign language Except there is one gorilla in particular, Coco, who apparently is smarter than the average gorilla and is capable of picking up and has picked up sign language quite impressively. Uh, some of these individuals actually are a little farther along than their uh, companions. They can invent their own signals. For example, a Hamadrius uh, baboon created a a particular hand signal which invited an infant uh, to get on board, to get to, to be carried by the female, and apparently invented it in order to communicate to her offspring. There's a, a few individuals that go even one step further. They invent signals and teach the signals to another member. The orang princess, for example, created a gesture, taught it to her infant, who picked it up and, uh, and understood it and passed it on herself.
Then, of course, stepping up to an even more complex form of language, we come to humans. Humans have a language complexity that goes way above what we've already discussed. What we have here, then, is a spectrum of perfection of communication. We could argue, arguably add another level, those animals that don't seem to communicate at all, or plants or something like that that don't, all the way up to humans and through humans with extremely complicated communication. This spectrum of communication, spectrum of perfection of communication, uh, encourages our minds to lift up toward the concept of an infinitely complex, perfect form of communication such as God himself would have.